أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم ما بأنفسهم صدق الله العلي العظيم Almost everyone has certain habits whether they are good or whether they are bad. All people have habits. Now these habits can take control of our lives. If they are bad habits, they can impede our lives. Sometimes they stop us from succeeding. There are certain individuals who are determined to succeed, but because of certain habits that they have, it stops them from succeeding to the point that some people because of their bad habits they feel that they have lost control they don't have a will and they don't have a determination to set free from those habits and it indeed it is very difficult to break away from bad habits Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says al-'adatu tab'un thanin that a habit becomes a second nature. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us on fitrah, we were born clean, pure, without any habits, without any bad habits, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us fresh. But unfortunately, as we grow older, we develop certain habits, maybe due to our parents, maybe due to the culture, maybe due to school, maybe due to certain friends, we begin to pick up bad habits and those habits turn into a second nature for us. They turn into a second nature. Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam says, لِلْعَادَةِ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ insan sultan. Some bad habits have an authority over us. We feel that we can't get rid of them. No matter how much we try, no matter how much we make a decision that I will stop this habit, I will change, I will no longer continue with this habit. That, but we see that it has some sort of authority over us. It has some sort of control over us. Amir al Mu'minin also says, Al Adatu Aduun Mutamalik. A habit is like an enemy that has control over us, a very powerful enemy that doesn't let us free. Have you seen an enemy that bribes you? An enemy that bribes. An enemy that gets you to do things that you don't wish to do, to do things unwillingly, so too are some habits. Habits are a powerful enemy that has control over us. And hence, hence, there is a significance put upon raising and upbringing and parenting a child ever since they're young. Ever since they're young, they're still babies. They're in their early years. We discipline them. We teach them. We parent them. Why? Because bad habits have not set in. Once bad habits come in, it will be very difficult, very difficult to tame a child, to parent a child. But when they're young, the younger they are, the less habits they have. And the less habits they have, they are easily molded, just like clay. Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, he tells his son, Imam al-Hasan, in his famous statement to his son, Imam al-Hasan, he says, وَإِنَّمَا قَلْبُ الْحَدَثْ كَالْأَرْضِ الْخَالِيَةِ The heart of a youth, of a child, is like a fertile land. مَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا, فيها مِنْ شَيْءٍ قَبِلَتْ Just like a fertile land, any seed that you put, it will grow like a tree, so too are the hearts of youth. So I come to parent you, 
to raise you, to teach you adab, to teach you morals and ethics before your heart becomes solid as a rock and become, before you pick up habits and you pick up different styles, lifestyles, I've come to teach you, to teach you ethics and morals. It starts from day one before children develop bad habits. Once they pick up bad habits, it's very difficult, very, di very difficult to get them to stop. Imagine you have a child that doesn't listen to music, that has never listened to music, and it is not, a, and is not addicted to music. You can easily tell them that this is the speech of shaitan, this is a tool used by shaitan. Allah says that manipulate them if you can. Allah challenges shaitan. Manipulate them if you can with your sound. What sound? The sound of music. Shaitan, one of his utensils, one of his tools is music. We can teach children. But once they become teenagers and they've become accustomed and used to listening to music, once it becomes an addiction, try to come and tell them to stop, it becomes difficult. Once it becomes a bad habit, it becomes difficult. Our Imams also teach us that secret habits tend to expose us. Tend to expose us. You think that this is a habit that no one knows about. It's a secret habit. But once in a while, you slip. We slip. We as human beings, we're not immaculate. We're not sinless. So we tend to slip. And Imam Hassan salam says, al qahirat. Habits are powerful. فَمَنْ اَعْتَادَ شَيْئًا فِي سِرِّهِ وَخَلَوَاتِهِ فَضَحَهُ فِي عَلَانِيَتِهِ وَعَنْدَ الْمَلَأِ He who has a bad habit in secret. It's a secret habit that no one knows about, but will be exposed. He will perform that habit in public without knowing. They'll slip. They'll slip. That habit will come out in public without knowing. And another hadith by Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, لِسَانُكَ يَسْتَبْعِيكَ مَا عَوَّدْتَهُ وَنَفْسُكَ تَقْتَضِيكَ مَا أَلِفْتَهُ That your tongue that is used to a certain habit, sometimes it will deceive you. You think this is a bad habit in secret, but sometimes in public, your tongue will slip. And you don't know. Like what? For example, using profanity. If we are used to using profanity in private, with friends, with family members, of course, no, no, no one uses profanity in public. No one uses profanity with, uh, you know, people that you have a formal, formal relationship with. But if your tongue is used to using profanity and saying profanity in private all the time, you will slip in public. Lisanuke yastadiq ma awatahu. Whatever you're, you're in the bad habit of saying in private, it will come to you in public. Gossiping as well. There are some people, they gossip privately, but not in public. Formally with everyone else, they put on a religious appearance, but when they're, when they're small circle of friends, and this is where we tend to gossip, unfortunately. We perform ghiba and gossip with our small circle of friends. That is why we have to be careful. When we're in public, when you're in a masjid, you don't need to watch yourself. When you're in a formal session, you, need, you don't need to watch yourself. We need to watch ourselves when we're when, with our enclosed small circle of friends, those whom we feel comfortable with, we tend to gossip, we perform ghibah, we backbite against this person and that person. When you're used to gossiping, this becomes a habit, you will do it in public as well. Even during formal sessions, when you're not supposed to gossip, it will slip from you. طيب. The Imams also teach us that habits, bad habits, they prevent us from reaching high stages of spirituality. High stages of spirituality. The hadith says, man adat. He who obeys his habits cannot reach high stages of spirituality. He'll be forbidden. He'll prevent himself or she prevents herself from reaching high stages of spirituality. He who obeys, she who obeys her, his or her habits. For example, for example, over, oversleeping. Some people have the bad habit of oversleeping. They cannot control their sleep. 
Sleep for them is a powerful force. They can't get out of bed. For these people, they miss out on a lot of spiritual opportunities. For example, Salat al-Fajr. They miss out on Salat al-Fajr. Why? Because they are in the bad habit of sleeping late, waking up late, and not being able to sleep, not being able to wake up for Salat al-Fajr. They miss out. They miss out on this great spiritual opportunity. You know, when you miss out on Salat al-Fajr, you're passing up on a great opportunity. You begin your day with Salat al-Fajr, with speaking to Allah Azza wa Jal, opening the day with the remembrance of Allah, asking Allah for blessings for that day. And then you start off your day. You go to your business, you go to your university, you go to your college, and you start off your day. When you sleep out, when you sleep in, and you miss out Salat al-Fajr, you're passing up this great opportunity. For some, they wake up for Salat al-Fajr, but they miss Salat al-Layl because it's, di it's difficult for them to wake up for Salat al-Layl 30 minutes, an hour before Fajr. So if you can't pray Salat al-Layl before Fajr, pray it before you go to sleep. What time do you go to sleep? Salat al-Layl doesn't take more than 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending, depending on how, how long you pray. There are some that miss out on the spiritual opportunity because of their habit of sleeping in, not being able to wake up. The hadith also says, You can reach the highest stages of spirituality just by avoiding your habits. Even if it's not a bad habit. Even if it's not a bad habit. You have a habit of sitting on a chair, sitting on a couch. Try sitting on the ground and look at the spiritual upliftment that you will receive. Just by avoiding certain habits, that you have, the, the, the certain comforts that we have. If we leave our comfort zone, we can attain high spiritual levels and stages by disciplining the nafs. Sometimes you don't discipline the nafs just from haram. That is a given. Sometimes we discipline the nafs even from that which is halal. Something that you can eat. It's halal, it's permissible, but you avoid. That gets you a a strong spiritual fulfillment. There was Ayatollah Sayyid Mirza Mahdi al-Shirazi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, who was a great scholar in the city of Karbala. My father says that I accompanied him. He was on his way to Hajj. In the year 1954, my father says that I performed Hajj. And Ayatollah Mirza Mahdi Shirazi had not performed Hajj up until then. So when I came back from Hajj, he came and he asked me, what is the way to go? How can we go on, a, go on the journey to Hajj from which country, which route? He took information from me. I realized that he's planning on going to Hajj the next year. And indeed, in 1955, the Sayyid decided on going to Hajj. So my father says that I accompanied him to Lebanon. And from Lebanon, he flew to Jeddah or Medina. So I said, I accompanied him to Lebanon, he stayed at a hotel in Beirut, in Lebanon. And I went with him, I accompanied him. In the hotel room, in the suite, there were couches. But I saw the Sayyid sitting on the floor. I told him, Sayyidna, sit on the couch. He said, no, this is better. This is a journey of servitude, of slavery. In safare bandigis. This is a journey of servitude and slavery, I will sit on the floor, although he could have sat on a couch. This is a person that knows how to discipline himself. He knows how to overcome his nafs by avoiding unnecessary habits. We have in some ahadith that overcoming a habit is an act of worship. It is equivalent to reciting Quran and dua and praying and fasting just by overcoming a bad habit of yours. The hadith says, The best of worship is trying to overcome a bad habit. And in another hadith, overcoming a bad habit is a virtue. It's a virtue that you had a bad habit for many years and you were able to overcome the habit, change your lifestyle. Whether it's regarding 
overeating or smoking or you have a sleep pattern or you have an addiction whatever it is you're oh you're able to overcome this habit this is a virtue this is an act of worship don't say it's impossible it's impossible for no no, no. nothing is impossible Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes it's hard say it's hard but never say it's impossible you can't I know some people that smoked for 20 years 20 years but then they stopped all of a sudden they stopped it's possible it's very much possible to give up an addiction and to go to give up a bad habit yes it requires self-discipline it requires a strong will the hadith says غالبوا أنفسكم على ترك العادات تغلبوها fight with yourself this is where jihad and nafs comes. Fight with yourself to overcome certain habits and you will win. You'll be victorious. And fight your desires and you will be able to control your desires. Most of us, we are controlled by our desires. We do not control our desires. Our desires control us. But we have the ability. If we wanted to, we can. But is it a matter of do we want to or we don't want to? That's a question that we have to ask ourselves. Do we want to overcome this habit or we don't want to overcome this habit? Another hadith says, غَيِّرُوا الْعَادَاتِ تَسْهُلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أطاعات. Overcome certain habits, acts of obligation, acts of devotion, acts of worship will become easier for you. Will become easier for you. I come back to the bad habit of sleeping in and this is a problem that many of our youth have. Sleeping in. When you sleep in, you can't wake up for, for Fajr. There's some youth that tell me, say, I've tried so much to wake up for Fajr, but I can't wake up. I tell him, what time do you sleep? He says, 3 a.m. Of course, when you're sleeping at 3 a.m. and Fajr is at 5 a.m., how do you expect to wake up for Salatul Fajr? It's impossible. Two hours of sleep, obviously you're not going to wake up. Even if a bomb explodes next to you, you're not going to wake up. Let alone having an alarm and, and you snooze for eight minutes, ten minutes. It's impossible. Sleeping in, sleeping, staying up all night. Sometimes you have to stay up all night. And, and by the way, a sahar is unrecommended. It's discouraged. It's discouraged to stay up at night. Stay up late is discouraged except in three cases. Number one, in seeking knowledge. If you are staying up at night to seek knowledge, then that is not just not discouraged, it is recommended. Number two in worship and acts of acts of worship, salat al dua, and number three for intimacy between a man and a woman. That is also not discouraged. Otherwise, staying up late at night. This is discouraged and you'll be forbidden from performing certain acts of worship like Salat al-Fajr, like Salat al-Layl. Also, غَيِّرُوا الْعَادَاتِ تَسْهُلُوا عَلَيْكُمُ الطَّاعَاتِ Change some of your habits. Acts of devotion will become easier. And this is very applicable for us, very relevant for us in the month of Ramadan. For those of us that have the bad habit, or a habit, I won't call it a bad habit, of caffeine, drinking coffee, drinking tea most of us have this habit when it comes to Ramadan we begin to suffer a lot of us we don't get hungry during the month of Ramadan we don't get thirsty and the weather is, is very beautiful we don't get thirsty but we have a withdrawal of caffeine because we drink coffee we drink tea and fasting becomes difficult the Imam says change your habits the acts of devotion, acts of worship will become easy. Sometimes you want to change your habit, your personal habit. Sometimes you want to change people's habits. You're a leader. You're a community leader. And you want to change people's habits. This is one of the most difficult tasks. As'abu siyasat, Amir al-Mu'mineen says, As'abu siyasat, the most difficult policies is changing people's habits. Sometimes as a leader, you can change a country's infrastructure, their economy, their military. You can change. But can you change their habits? This is difficult. 
a true leader, a successful leader, is not the one that just fix a country's economy and infrastructure, but can change their habits, can change their personalities. This is the most difficult job. كُلُّ شَيْءٍ Amir al-Mu'mineen says, إِلَّا نَقْلُ Everything is, is possible and easy, except changing people's habits, to change a nation. This was the job of prophets. That is why prophets have the, the most difficult jobs, because prophets, they're not required to change a country's infrastructure and change their economy and build them a, a military. Their job is to change people themselves, change their habits, change their mentality. The, the job of the Prophet was to purify people, purify their souls, purify their minds, change them. Rasulullah came to remove the shackles, the chains that the people of Jahiliyyah were chained to. Well, of course, they're not physical chains. But they're spiritual, psychological, mental, because of their bad habits. Rasulullah's job was to change their habits. That is why Allah says, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin, hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change a people, lest they change themselves. They make an effort to change themselves, change their habits. Change their habits. Why do a lot of our countries suffer? Suffer. Part of it is because of us, because of our deeds, because of our actions. We're not grateful to Allah. We don't help the needy. We don't help the poor. We complain all the time. Allah will never change us. When we don't make the right steps to change our habits, Allah will not change us either. <laughs> what are some bad habits that have been mentioned in the narrations and ahadith? Bad habits that need to be changed. For example, some ahadith tell us that the, bad, the habit of being nosy, being nosy, wanting to know about people who got married, who got divorced, who had children, who didn't have children, who cheated on his wife, who didn't cheat on his wife, who did this, who did that. Some people are nosy. Some people are nosy. Some people, when you meet them, they're worse than FBI agents. You know when FBI agents, they ask you a hundred questions? Some people have the ability to ask you 200 questions in five minutes. Believe me, I've been there and I've done that. And I've seen, mind your own business. We have to mind our own business. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, بِئْسَ الْعَادَةَ الْفُضُولِ بِئْسَ الْعَادَةَ الْفُضُولِ One of the worst habits is to be nosy. To, to want to know about people's problems, issues. You ask around. You, and today things have become easier because we have social media. You go on their accounts, where did they eat, where did they go, which lecture did they listen to, and you want to know. Why? Instead of caring about other people's lives, let's worry about our own lives. طُوبَى لِمَنْ شَغَلَهُ عَيْبُهُ عَنْ عَيُوبِ النَّاسِ The hadith basically goes like this. That good, good is to those, good glad, glad, glad tidings are to those that worry about themselves and don't worry about others. This is a bad habit that is mentioned in hadith. Another bad habit is anger. Anger. Those who are in the habit of getting angry on petty things, small things, things that don't matter, something that is very small. A lot of us get angry when someone cuts us off on the road. And there's something called road rage. Road rage. You see this person, they're, they're very normal. They're very normal. But when they're behind the steering wheel and they sit in the car and God forbid someone cuts them off. God forbid someone goes in front of them without signaling, they, they lose their mind. Or at home, they lose their temper with, the, with their wife. The wife loses her temper with the husband over petty things. <clears throat> Especially when we're fasting and we haven't had our coffee and our ca caffeine and we come from a long day of work, we could get angry at the slightest things. And here's the test, my dear brothers and sisters. Here's the test. That when we're fasting, we can keep our cool. We can keep calm. And we don't get angry. I remember a couple of years ago, I was in New Zealand. It was the first night of Ramadan. I gave a lecture called The Fast and the Furious. You've heard of the movie The Fast and the Furious. The true Fast and Furious is here. 
in the month of Ramadan. When we, when we fast and we become furious because we hadn't had our caffeine, our coffee, this is the test. We have to be careful. لا تسرعن إلى الغضب The Imam says لا تسرعن إلى الغضب فيتسلط عليك بالعادة Don't quickly become angry because if you do that once, twice, three times, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. Learn to control your anger. And this is a lesson for all of us and for me as well, that we control our anger. Choose your battles, my dear friends. You know, getting angry destroys our health. It destroys our health. You see a lot of people that are quick to become angry, they suffer from high blood pressure, they suffer from diabetes, maybe they have heart conditions. Why? Why? Life is already short and we make it even shorter by getting angry on petty things. We should be in the, in the habit. Don't say I'm too old. Even if you're seven years old, don't, you, don't say you're too old. We can always start fresh and overcome certain habits if we pay attention to them. If we pay attention to them. Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A hadith of Ahl al-Bayt also tell us about good habits that we should develop. There are bad habits that we should avoid and there are good habits that we should develop. For example, doing good for others. This should be a habit. Someone asks you for help. For example, you speak good English. There's a new member in the community that doesn't speak English, that needs help in filing applications and getting a passport, getting anything. Be in the habit, develop a habit of lending a helping hand. Be in the service of others. Awud, Amir Mu'mineen says, Awud nafsak al jamil. Be in the habit of doing good, doing good deeds. فَإِنَّهُ يُجْمِلُ عَنْكَ الْأُحْدُوثَ وَيُجْزِلْ لَكَ الْمَثُوبَةِ Be in that habit. Good things will happen to you and your reward will be multiplied. Also, a good habit is to forgive. Be in the habit of forgiving. There are some people that refuse to forgive. If someone wrongs them, their wife, says something inappropriate or you know they hurt their feelings they don't forgive they don't forgive their children siblings that don't forget one another no forgive be easygoing and avoid insisting on anything the hadith says i would samah be in the habit of forgiving anyone anyone who hurts you disrespects you be in the habit of forgiving khalas say what has happened is happened. We will start a new page. وَتَجَنَّبْ الْإِلْحَاقِ And avoid insisting. There are some people, they have the, a bad habit of insisting on anything. Whatever they want, whatever they need, they insist, they insist, they insist. This is a bad habit. This is a bad habit. Among the good habits to have is to have pure intentions, good intentions. عَوَّدْ نَفْسَكَ حُسْنَ النِّيَّةِ وَجَمِيلَ الْمَقْصَدِ Always have good intentions. Have pure intentions. Even if it's something that can benefit you, even if it's something that might bring you popularity, but you put it in your mind, put it in your mind that you want to, that you want to do this for a good cause, for the sake of Allah Azza wa And any, any sort of act, any sort of action that you'd like to perform, do it for the sake of Allah. You come to the masjid, do it for the sake of Allah. You help your wife at home, do it for the sake of Allah. You help your husband, do it for the sake of Allah. Everything should be for the sake of Allah. Be in that habit. Also, to have tolerance, to have patience. عَوُّدُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ الْحِلْ To speak kindly. To use gentle words, kind words. And to say salam before others say salam to you. Be in the habit of saying salam to others. عَوُّدْ لِسَانَ كَلِينَ الْكَلَامِ وَبَذْلَ السَّلَامِ be in the habit of you starting to say salam to others. Don't wait, for, don't wait for others to say salam to you. Also, be in the habit of being good listeners. We are experts in talking. We are experts in talking, but are we experts in listening as well? The Imam says, husna al istima. Be in the habit of being a good listener. Sometimes our friends, they don't want advice from us. They don't want anything from us other than they want us to listen to them. They want us to listen to them. And especially women more than men. A, a woman 
by nature she wants someone to listen, especially a husband, a husband who does not make time for his wife, a husband who's always busy at work, at business, and doesn't make time for his wife, his wife will, will feel deprived, emotionally deprived. Sometimes a woman doesn't want a solution from her husband. She just wants him to listen. She just wants him to listen, right? She wants to speak, she wants to vent. Sometimes a, a woman, when she speaks to her husband, she just wants to vent. Be in the habit of listening. Give her lending ears. However, be careful, be careful who you listen to, whom you listen to. Is this person, will, is, will this person take you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal? Or take you closer to Shaytan? I will conclude with this. A hadith by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Amir al-Mu'mineen teaches us that we need to discipline ourselves by not picking up new habits. Old habits are old habits. If we can get rid of them, get rid of them. But don't pick up new habits. Don't pick up new habits. Discipline. We discipline ourselves by not picking up new habits. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, one day, and we're still commemorating his demise and his martyrdom. One day, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam was having a meal. They brought him a dish of sweets called faludaj. Faludaj was a tasty, delicious dish of sweets. And I apologize for having to describe this dish and everyone is fasting. But there's a point to it. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, they told him, try this faludaj. Faludaj, it's very tasty. And we had Mu'mineen put his finger and he brought it close to his mouth and he smelt it and it smelt good. The, the, the sweet smell of, of sweets. And he spoke to Al Faludaj. He said, You smell good. Hasan And you look good. And you taste good. Walakin, I will not taste you. And I will not eat you. Why am you a Mu'mineen? Is it haram? No, it's not haram. Is it makruh? No, it's not makruh. Did you steal this, this sweet? That they steal it from someone and they gave it to you? No, 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 no. Then why would you not taste it? Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, وَلَكِنْ أَكْرَهْ أَنْ أُعَوِّدْ نَفْسِي مَا لَمْ تَعْتَدْ I hate to teach myself a habit that I did not know. I hate to pick up a habit that I previously did not have. Meaning, Amir Mumin is saying that I'm afraid eating this sweet becomes a habit for me. And I discipline myself by avoiding such a habit. Even if it's a tasty, sweet dish, but I will avoid it so that I discipline myself because this will become a habit. This will become a habit. I will crave this sweet every once in a while. I avoid it. This was Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This is how he disciplined himself and he disciplines his disciples, his followers, his Shia. He did not avoid something that is haram or makruh. He avoided something that which is halal, but he did not want to pick up a bad habit. One of the habits of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam was to visit the poor and the needy and the, and the destitute alone at night without telling them who he is. There were a lot of poor that would receive support from Amir al-Mu'mineen and they did not know who he was. When Imam al-Hassan and Imam al-Hussein came back after the burial of their father, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, they passed by a beggar, someone poor, sitting on the sidewalk. And they saw him crying and weeping. They told him, what is wrong? Why are you crying? He said, I've been hungry for several days. I have nothing to eat. There was a man that would come to me every night in the middle of the night disguised and he would bring me food. But it's been a couple of nights that this man has not come and I'm dying from hunger. I have nothing to eat. They brought him food. They gave him food. They told him, do you know this? who this man is? He said, no. I have no idea who he is. 
But when he would come, I would only see the remembrance of Allah on his lips. And he would, when he would come to me, it's as if the walls and the earth and all my being, the entire being, would say dhikr along with him. But I never knew who he was. They told him this was our father, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ibn Ali. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبنا من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المغفور ذنوبهم المكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وعافية وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به به لدينك ولا تستبدل به غيري أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يطلع الفجر من ليلتي هذا ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه ولأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والعلماء والشهداء نقرأ سورة الفاتحة مع الصلوات